The summer transfer window is supposed to be that time of real buzz and excitement. Unfortunately for United right now, it feels like we're a little bit stuck in the mud. City are getting Haaland and Liverpool are getting Darwin Nunez and we're there with protracted negotiations for Frankie de Jong. And what else? Darren Neville's expressed his, his worries and his concerns. Is he right to be concerned about this transfer window considering it's the 16th of June? Considering our preseason doesn't start until the 12th of July? I want to speak about it properly in this video. I think it's fair to say that the frustrations and the worries are starting to build up among United fans. And I want to explain exactly why and why there is justification for that now. I always said that this week was where my own personal opinion might start to switch. And I can see it and feel it switching. And I would explain it. So please, if you do enjoy the video by the end of it, consider joining the United People's TV community. I'd love to have you on board. Hit the subscribe button and hit the notifications bell. You get a ping every time I go live. But this is what Gary Neville said this morning. He said, I know it's early in the window, but it's worrying that Manchester United are struggling to get their business done. The others seem set and ready, yet United can't get moving. Eric Ten Hag needs his group together ASAP to mould them. Bringing them in late will only make it harder for him. I hope it happens soon. Now, where do you stand on that? Do you agree with Gary? Do you feel... Because I was speaking to the lads on the podcast this week and we all unanimously felt that, yeah, we're not that frustrated at this particular moment in time. But I feel that sort of changed quite a bit this week. Now, I'm somebody who's wax lyrical about all the changes that have happened behind the scenes. At the hand of that man, John Murto has been leading the changes to United from a boardroom level, structurally, Eric Ten Hag coming in. I think United have done a lot of good, but that had to be matched up by success in the transfer window because next season is going to be even more competitive than it was last season. It was hyper-competitive. And now the fixtures are being released today. It only goes to show how important it is that United get their, stuff, their deals done early because we look at these fixtures in August. Five fixtures in August. Liverpool in the third game. The transfer window might close on the 31st of August, but ideally you want them all in and ready for that first game against Brighton. Otherwise, you might be dropping points there simply because you've been getting your transfers done later. And then look at that in October, by the way. Absolutely crazy. Man United have got nine games in October. This squad, as it currently stands, is not big enough, fit enough, good enough to navigate that. Nine games in one calendar month. And look, as I said... On the one hand, it's only the 16th of June. We've got 11 days until Eric Ten Hag is back to begin his preseason plans. We've got until the 12th of July before our first preseason game, I think it's against Liverpool, and our preseason tour. So there still is plenty of time. But I think that the worries are starting to build because there's, there's evidence, evidence is starting to mount. And let me run through all of this and why I think there is justification now for concerns and worries. Not huge scaremongering fears, but I've I've got genuine concerns. We went into this summer. It's emerged since I think it was the day of the FA Youth Cup final that Frankie De Jong is our number one target. Absolutely our number one priority this summer. Now my personal opinion, that should be a defensive midfielder instead of a playmaker. But that's just by the by. Irrelevant of that. The De Jong situation has dragged on. Today we hopefully should get an update from Barcelona in terms of what their financial situation is and whether or not they will need to sell Frankie de Jong or whether or not Manchester United will be able to buy Frankie de Jong. Let's find out what goes on there. But he's our number one target. And if we're being completely honest, the way it shaped up this summer, it looks like Darwin Nunez was really quite high on Manchester United's list. Now, ultimately, that didn't come to fruition because Benfica wanted a bid in war. They ideally wanted United and Liverpool to sit there scrapping it out and trying to get Darwin Nunez like a house uh, at an auction. We weren't willing to pay 100 million euros for a player who has to become, who has to play second fiddle to Cristiano Ronaldo and share the game time until next season when that sort of, the torch would have been passed on. We weren't going to spend 100 million on Darwin Nunez. We got outpriced on that one. Then we look at another priority for Eric Ten Hag, and we're pretty sure it's Urien Timber, the Ajax 20-year-old defender to be brought in by Eric Ten Hag. One, one centre-back, one playmaker, one attacker. That's what we were all told were the priorities going into the summer. And now with Urien Timber, we're seeing and hearing reports that he may well be staying at Ajax. And the chances of him staying now are pretty big at the club. Now, it's these things all sort of mounted on top of each other that fill me with a little bit 
of concern because as I, as I said here on Twitter yesterday, I said if, if Eric Ten Hag has prioritised Frankie de Jong and Urien Timber and he ends up with neither of them this summer, then it's a very bad situation. It really is. And as, as I said, I'm not too upset about Darwin Nunes. I clearly think he would have been a very good signing. I also know that United don't have the funds this summer to spend £100 million on the attacker when we have to sort out the spine of our team first. Urien Timber is an interesting one. At the age of 20, I can understand if he feels he doesn't need to move away from Ajax at this particular moment in time. But he could become a central figure for United and play week in, week out. So it's semi a bit of a lack of ambition if he doesn't want to move. Or maybe he doesn't trust Eric Ten Hag in the process. But with Ten Hag, look, I said this on Twitter yesterday as well. I said, look, Eric Ten Hag, after the Ajax title celebrations, could have gone to the Caribbean, got pissed up, drank cocktails on the beach for three days and forgotten everything. He would have been a very, it would have, he would have deserved it. But he didn't. What Eric Ten Hag did was come straight to Manchester, start working immediately with the club on these pre-season plans for all the signings that he probably wanted to make and instead we're now sat in a situation where it's 11 days until the pre-season and Manchester United as far as we know what we know we've put in a bid for Frankie de Jong that's been rejected we're still in negotiations we've missed out on Darwin Nunez because we got outpriced in the negotiations and Yuri and Timber we don't know what's going on there no official bid has actually happened yet now I like to think that a lot of stuff is happening behind the scenes and that this man over here is really going to surprise us all History dictates to us that that won't happen. As I said, Manchester United fans, we have to head into every summer like this with a natural point of pessimism because the club's just let us down so many times over the last, I don't know how many years. But United really are not, at this moment in time, getting it off onto the front foot. And that's why I think that Gary Neville is right to have those worries, right to have those concerns. Because at the same time as United are sitting here, still trying to negotiate a deal for Frankie de Jong, still trying to figure out who else we're going to be signing. You see Man City are now going to be going after Mark Cucurella. They've already signed Erling Haaland. They don't rest on their laurels. They're going to be getting, well, Mark Cucurella, he scored against us in our, when we got spanked at the Amex. He did look pretty damn decent, I'll be honest. Um, they're going to go and get him. No doubt they're probably going to be shifting Gabriel Jesus or maybe Raheem Sterling too. We've just sold a keeper. Gavin, I can't remember, name, can't remember his second name, 15 million to Southampton. Ridiculous. They're going to be spent. They're going to get like 100 million plus from sales this summer to bolster the already big budget that they've got. Whilst Eric Ten Hag is, as I said, kind of left waiting at this moment in time. I'm not saying that time that we don't have enough time because we do have enough time. But United have got to pull the finger out. United have got to. I, I've told you, and I've said this before. There's different commodities you can use as the most important in this summer transfer window, but time is the ultimate commodity. Time is the one leveler for everybody. No matter how much money you've got, everyone's still got the same deadlines. And we know full well that we will run out of time given what we need to do and given the fact that that fixture list has only sort of highlighted just how important it is to get that squad in and ready. I'm not just talking about getting the squad in on the 6th of August ready for Brighton. Eric Ten Hag has a system that he is going to implement at Manchester United. That will take time. And the earlier, as Gary Neville says here, the earlier you bring it, the min to him, the more likely it is that Eric Ten Hag's system will be able to embed itself, find its feet. And that for those games then in August, we'll be ready for that game against Brighton and Brentford. And then playing Liverpool in the third game of the season, it's going to be an acid test for Eric Ten Hag. United need to give the best possible circumstances for him to succeed. The United need to go hard with the young man or go home. Choose someone else. Don't sit and go. I told you, that's why my personal position has changed this week. I said, look, the first bid went in on Friday. What I wanted to see was the next bid within 48, 72 hours. Instead, United have just kept it behind closed doors and are just going to and fro and to and fro. One million here, one million there. It's, it's the commodity of money being the most valuable thing to United. That bottom line. That's what this man has to fucking change and get a grip of. Because it's the Glazers who hold that wallet. It's the Glazers who lead that logic. And it's that logic which has dragged the club into the mud over the last five, six, seven, eight, nine years. And look, there's so much more we need to do as well. We can talk about Dean Henderson going out to Nottingham Forest. We can talk about Andreas Pereira's future. We can talk about Phil Jones's future. Anthony Martial's future. 
We can talk about Eric Bailly's future. We can talk about the defensive midfielder we need to sign, the attacker we need to sign, the centre-back we need to sign, De Jong we need to sign. There's so much to do, far more than all the other clubs around us, or certainly far more than City and Liverpool. And that's the only two, th two people that we should be aiming towards, the top. It's where we want to be. Everyone else is fucking irrelevant. So therefore, this summer, all, all City needed to do was really bring a striker in. They've got Haaland. And now they might be going after Cucurella, strengthen their fullback options. Liverpool, they needed someone probably to replace Mane. They've got it now, and then Mane will shift out. Their squad, they're both good. Okay, United, we need so much. That's why the slow start is worse for United than it would be for other clubs, because we've got so much to do and so much promise, and we're in a position now with this manager where if we get it right, we can start climbing that ladder again. And I think Gary Neville's right to suggest that there are worries. I'm, I'm worried at this point now. I definitely am worried. I've got some frustration. I do think a little bit of the frustration, as I said, to this point has been slightly over-exaggerated. But where do you stand at this point? Are you worried? Are you past worried? You let me know what you think in the comments below. But yeah, the transfer window was always going to be tough for United this summer. But the longer that we leave it and the, the, the more time that we waste, the harder we make it for ourselves to complete what we need to do. So John Murto, man, work some miracles. You've got, you, were, you were the one who didn't want to bring in someone like Paul Mitchell. Because that was, a, not, I'm not saying Paul Mitchell was definitely available, but somebody of his ilk with his experience was available. John Murto chose the structure, brought in Andy O'Boyle to take away the administrative things from his uh, to-do list, which means that he focuses on transfers. So, John, it's on you to bring Eric Ten Hag the men that he needs to navigate this season in the Premier League and in time for August. Otherwise, we're going to be starting on the back foot. And it's the last thing we need, considering we're 35 points behind City, 34 points behind Liverpool. You can let me know what you think in the comments below, like you always do.